Hello, health champions. Many of you are asking about what to eat on intermittent fasting and when you're doing one meal a day. So today I will give you a seven day sample meal plan. And this is actually what I ate last week. And I have a feeling there's gonna be a few surprises for some of you. And one day I had a sausage with vegetable scrambled egg. It was kind of a, like a variant of an omelet. And you start off with some onion and bell pepper. You just brown it, saute it a little bit in some butter. And then you scramble three eggs and you mix them together. Then you cook some sausage and you serve it on a plate and you add some cheese and serve it with some avocado. So it's really, really simple. And here are how much I put in in grams. If you want ounces, you just divide by 30 but I'm not gonna go through all of the details, but I wanna give you a few key numbers and you can just go back and look through. This should be pretty self-explanatory. So this came up to about 1,350 calories and we had 77% of calories from fat, 20% from protein and only 3% of calories from carbohydrates. So this is combining intermittent fasting with a very strongly ketogenic meal plan. And for those of you who are new, I just want to quickly review the benefits of OMAD, of one meal a day and intermittent fasting. So it's basically all about reducing insulin. And why do we want to do that? Because insulin is the primary factor responsible for weight gain. So the way to lose weight is to reduce insulin. And at the same time, of course, we will probably reduce the risk or reverse the type 2 diabetes, which is just insulin resistance. And there are two ways to drive insulin, and those are carbohydrates and the frequency of meals that we eat. So when we look at the relationship between carbohydrates and insulin, then if we eat 300 grams of carbohydrate, like a lot of people do on a standard diet, we're gonna have a lot of insulin. Then if we reduce the carbohydrates, we're gonna have a pretty much linear reduction in insulin as well. And the other factor, of course, is frequency. So if we eat six meals a day, we have big meals and we have snacks, but we eat six times, then we're gonna trigger insulin six times. And the more carbohydrate we eat those six times, the more insulin we're gonna trigger six times. If we eat ketogenic or low carb, we're gonna trigger less insulin, but we're still gonna do it many, many times a day. So if we really want to reverse insulin resistance, we wanna reduce the carbs and the frequency of meals. And even though most people do this for weight loss, it's important to understand that insulin resistance is responsible for about 90% of all the degenerative disease that we experience in the modern world today. And also when we do fasting and OMAD, then we're also improving longevity and our immune system. And of the day, I had a hamburger salad. And a salad is so classic, it's so versatile. You can put just about anything you want in there. These are just examples. And instead of the hamburger, of course, you can put another meat of your choice, like steak or chicken or salmon. So here I used 20% fat ground beef and then you just brown that up and I put some uh, multi seasoning, some seasoning salt on there. And then it's pretty simple, just lettuce, tomato, onion, avocado, bell pepper, cheese, bacon bits and olive oil. And for dressing, when you have these many things in it and it has so much flavor, you don't need any fancy commercial dressings with seed oil. So I just use salt, pepper, oil and vinegar and it's fantastic. So what are the numbers on this? It's about 1,450 calories. We get 79% from fat, 19% from protein, and only 2% of calories from carbohydrate. And again, virtually all of these carbs are from leafy greens, so it's almost like zero. Your body is really not gonna notice that at all. Everyone who has transitioned from high carb multiple meals down to low carb and one or two meals a day, they know how easy it is to maintain that lifestyle. 
But if your body isn't used to it, then don't try to get there all at once because your body is going to protest. So remember, be nice to yourself. Get fat adapted gradually. Start by just reducing carbs. If you've been eating 300 grams of carbs a day, then don't try to get into ketosis right away because you probably will suffer. So try to go maybe 10% less. So drop it by 10% every week. And it doesn't really matter how long it takes you to get there as long as you are consistently changing something, it's going to go faster than you think. Within a few weeks, you're going to be low carb and you're not going to miss any of the things that you ate. Same thing with the eating period. You want to reduce it gradually. A lot of people eat 16 hours a day. They have something to eat first thing in the morning and the last thing before bed. So don't try to go to one meal a day all of a sudden. Go cut off an hour or two at each end of your eating period. And before you know it, you'll be down to eight hours and six hours and four hours. And then when you're fat adapted and you're used to that, then it's a cinch to go to one meal a day. And then you'll find that it's both effortless and pain-free. Change doesn't have to be painful. I bet you didn't think you could have fajitas. Just cut out the tortillas and everything else is pretty much fine. I love guacamole. I keep it simple. I just put some onion, garlic, and a squeeze of lemon in there with some salt and pepper. I like to use about three avocados for two people. That comes out to about 250 grams or about eight ounces, give or take. Then I use some tomatoes and I chop them up with some raw onion to make a pico de gallo. And I also use refried beans and all the good versions, the ones with a little bit of fat in the stores, they have soybean oil, even the Mexican brands. So I add my own lard. I try to find something without soybean oil and I just add a little bit of lard. Then I put onion, bell pepper and olive oil in a frying pan and brown that, saute that together. I put the skirt steak on the grill with just salt and pepper and I get it as hot as I possibly can and then just cook them one to two minutes per side. It's really, really quick. So you do that at the end and have everything else ready. And then I serve that with some sour cream. Now that comes out to about 1300 calories. And if this is too much food for you, you cut back a little bit. If it's not enough, you just increase it by a little bit. You're getting 71% of calories from fat, 19% from protein and 10% from carbohydrate. So if you're trying to get into ketosis, I wouldn't do this every day, but only your net carb count is 31 grams. So for a lot of people, you're still going to be able to stay in ketosis with that. But if your body is stubborn and you have trouble burning fat and getting into ketosis, then just cut out the refried beans and then you'll be about half of that carb percentage. Now, one of the main challenges of one meal a day is to eat enough food. And this depends also on who you are, because some people do one meal a day to lose weight, but others are trying to get the benefits of autophagy, the immune benefits and so forth. So if you're skinny and you're using up 2,500 calories, then it's hard to eat all that food in one sitting. The meals I give you are about 13 to 1500 calories for the most part. And then if you're thin, insulin sensitive and you're active on top of that, you might need 3500 calories. So for those people, you probably want to do one meal a day, some days a week, and then try to catch up on the other days. But if you are overweight, meaning that you have a fortune of energy stored on your body as reserve energy, then you have some to take off. And now if you eat 12 to 1500 calories, then the whole idea of that is to get into fat burning, to lower insulin so your body has access to those fat reserves. And then you can burn anywhere from 500 to 1500 calories of body fat and that's why you're not hungry. Your body isn't starving, it's just eating some 
of the calories from food and some of the calories from the body. But if you're skinny, you can't do that because there's a point where you're too thin and the body says, I can't burn anymore. I don't have this reserve and you have to start eating a little bit more. So you can do, if you're thin, you can do one meal a day for the autophagy benefits, but probably not try to do that every day. Another one of my favorites is lamb chops. And then you could have that with a variety of things. And this time I had cauliflower casserole and some tabbouleh. I cooked the cauliflower with garlic and some olive oil. You sprinkle the olive oil or brush the olive oil with the garlic on the cauliflower. You cook it for about 15 minutes. Then you take it out, you mix it with sour cream and cheese and you put it in for another 15 minutes. And then the tabbouleh is one of my favorites, but the original version from the Middle East has bulgur wheat in it. So I just took out the bulgur wheat and I put pecans in. So we take parsley chopped lemon, you peel off the peel and then you chop the rest of it. You chop some pecans and some onions, and then you put in an equal weight. So I use about 15 grams of each of these ingredients. And then with that, you put a tablespoon of olive oil on top of it. So that's part of this olive oil. And then you mix it all up with some salt and pepper, and it's super delicious. I eat that a couple of three times a week probably, and it goes with just about everything. It's fantastic with steak. And then you grill the lamb chops and you serve it all up. So this is a big meal. It's 1700 calories. We get 74% of calories from fat, 22 from protein and five from carbohydrates. So this is pretty much a classic ketogenic meal, the, the ratios. But how do you get enough nutrients? That's always the thing. People say if you eat keto, if you're going one meal a day, if you're fasting, you're gonna starve your body, you're gonna get nutritional deficiencies. But that's not true because your body has some reserves and if you eat quality foods, not anything processed, that's the thing. Everything should be cooked from scratch when you eat one meal a day. And it's the processed food that is devoid of nutrients. And the food has to be satisfying, it has to be very rich, and that's where we eat things that have most of the calories from fat. So rich, satisfying, and filling. And that's important because you don't want to get hungry. You want something that really fills you up, that really stabilizes the blood sugar so that you don't have any swings because that's where you're going to get the cravings. And if possible, eat as much low carb as you can because it's all about the insulin. Another one of my favorites is steak, of course, and this time I had it with some roasted broccoli and cream sauce. I start off with the broccoli and garlic. I put it in a Pyrex dish and I cover it with aluminum foil so it doesn't dry out. And I cook that for about 15 minutes. Then I add some cheese on top and I grill it, I roast it a little bit higher temperature for another five or eight minutes just to brown it and melt the cheese. Super delicious, salt and pepper of course. Then I cook the asparagus in a pan with some butter, maybe a teaspoon of vinegar or lemon and salt and pepper again. The steak I used this time was a ribeye which has about 15% fat, so if you use a fillet or a leaner cut, then the numbers are gonna go down just a little bit. And something I love to do is to make a creme fraiche sauce in the end. So creme fraiche is like sour cream with twice the fat. Sour cream has about 15% fat, and this one has about 30 to 35. It's a little difficult to find, but I get mine from Trader Joe's. Maybe I shouldn't say that, because then I won't be able to find it there anymore but I like you guys, so I share that secret with you. And then I put, I put a little dab of uh, cognac or cooking wine or something just to kind of clean out the pan before I add the creme fraiche, and it makes its own sauce. You don't need any thickener. 
you just very very carefully warm it up and it's a done deal it's super super delicious can't fail and this meal comes out 1658 calories 69 percent fat a little bit higher in protein because of all the steak but also some cheese 26 percent and carbohydrates at 5%. So again, pretty classic keto diet ratios. Let's touch a little bit on the macros. A classic ketogenic diet is going to get about 75% of calories from fat, 20 from protein, and 5 from carbohydrate. And I don't think the macros are super important when you're doing intermittent fasting. If you're only eating one meal a day, it is not that critical. It helps to keep the carbs low as well. But here's why you tend to end up here anyway, because you only eat once a day, you have to eat rich food. You have to eat something that you can fit in a certain volume that still gives you all the nutrients. And it has to be very dense, calorically rich food. So most people kind of end up there anyway. And 5% carbohydrate, calories from carbohydrate would be about 25 grams of net carbs. If you eat 70, 20, 10, 10% 10 carbs would be 50 grams, 65, 20, 15, 15% of carbs would be 75 grams, and 60, 20, 20 would be 100 grams of net carbohydrates. So a lot of people might have to be more toward the 25 or the 50 grams even on one meal a day while they're reversing their insulin resistance. But as they get leaner, as their bodies heal, as they reverse their insulin resistance, then they can probably try a little bit higher and find a new balance point that works for them. And how do you know then long term what balance point really works for you? Well, the answer is blood work but you can't measure just glucose. You have to measure insulin. And why is that? Let's take an example. If you are young and healthy and insulin sensitive, your glucose sits at about 85 when you're fasting and it takes about three units of fasting insulin in the blood to maintain that glucose because your body makes a little of glucose from gluconeogenesis. It breaks down some glycogen and then you need just a tiny little bit of insulin to process through and get that steady, slow flow of glucose into the cells. But then let's say that you eat like most people do and five years later you get more blood work and now your glucose looks perfect. They're saying you have nothing to worry about but you went and you checked insulin as well and you found out that your insulin was up to nine it was three times higher so how could that be because your glucose is still good because glucose is a controlled variable it is super super important for the body to maintain it at a steady level the brain needs steady fuel and that's why there's a very narrow band where the body works desperately hard to keep the glucose in that range. And here now we see five years later, your body has to work three times harder because the cells are becoming insulin resistant. And if you only checked glucose, you changed nothing, then five years later, your glucose is probably about the same and your insulin is probably way higher again. So now it's up five times from the initial level. 15 years later, you see your glucose is still normal. It's still in the normal range, but it's starting to creep up and your insulin is up sevenfold. So 85 is a really good number. It could be even lower if you're on a keto diet and that would still be fine. But if you're kind of borderline just low carb, then 85 is a great number. So what we have to understand is when it slips up to 92, 94, that's still considered normal, but it means something. The body is starting to work really hard. And then eventually when it loses the fight and we get a higher glucose, when it gets above that ideal range, 
That only happens because there's almost no amount of insulin that will keep the glucose down. The cells are so insulin resistant that the glucose are only going to go up after the body has completely lost the fight. And when we look at these yellow arrows, and this person is a full-blown type 2 diabetic, pretty far gone, and his blood glucose is at 170, that doesn't look dramatically different relative to the insulin, but again, for the glucose to double, for the fasting glucose to get to 170, the body really has to lose the fight. And that's how you figure out where you need to be, because if you check this every year, then you can monitor your insulin and you can do some calculations and you can easily figure out if you need to be a little bit higher or a little bit lower. Another favorite is chicken wings. I pretty much only eat favorites, by the way. And chicken wings, we probably have about 10 or 12 of them, uh, 400 grams or so. I like to have celery and bell pepper. I know some people like carrots, but I just like these. And then I make my own dipping sauce. I melt some butter and then I just pour in some wing sauce and some chili sauce and some lemon and whatever you like. Uh, just mix it up, but it's great to have that butter because it makes them so creamy and so yummy. And I forgot to put that on the list, but sometimes I sprinkle some Parmesan cheese on top of it all. And this gives us 1,250 calories, 75% from fat, 21% from protein, 4% from carbohydrate. And I bet this is the biggest surprise from most of you. Pizza. Dr. Eckberg eats pizza. Yes, probably about once a week, and you can too. The trick, though, is to not go to the store and get those pizza crusts that they say are keto with cauliflower. Because if you check the list, they're just regular pizza crusts that they sprinkle some cauliflower into. They sometimes have more carbohydrate than the regular ones. If you are one of those people who can make a 100% cauliflower crust, that is good. I applaud you. Mine ended up too soggy. So what I do is I use a tortilla. And there are actually some really good low-carb tortillas out there now without a bunch of weird stuff in them. And this one I found has about six grams of net carbs. So that's well within a keto budget. And we'll show you the numbers here. Then you just add all the toppings, pretty simple. And I sometimes, I like a lot of tomato flavor. So I sometimes use a tomato paste, just like a tablespoon of tomato paste on the bottom of it. And then I top it with tomatoes bell pepper, onion, mushroom, sausage, bacon bits, and cheese. So the toppings are like 10 times the thickness of the tortilla, obviously. And then what I like to do is, in Sweden, there's something called pizza salad. And what it is, it's like coleslaw, but without sugar and without cream. All you do is it's finely sliced cabbage with vinegar, salt, pepper, and a little basil or some Italian spices or something like that. A couple of tablespoons of olive oil, so about one tablespoon per person. And this is super delicious. It's fast to make. It doesn't have to sit. And when you're done, you kind of squeeze it to soften it a little bit and then just serve it straight up. This gives you 1,292 calories, 72% of calories from fat, 20 from protein and 7% from carbohydrate, which is 24 grams. So even pizza, if you do it this way, can fit well into a keto lifestyle. If you enjoyed this video, you're gonna love that one. And if you truly wanna master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell, and turn on all the notifications so you never miss a life-saving video.